My name is Stephen Dustewald. I'm a licensed professional structural engineer with 37 years of experience in the structural field. I have 25 years of experience as owner and principal of my own structural engineering firm here in Las Vegas. I have focused on nuclear power plant design, large commercial and industrial buildings, and utilizing design of all four major structural materials, concrete, steel, masonry, and wood. I first became aware of the problems with the official account of the collapse when I saw a, a DVD online uh, from Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. Uh, they pointed out various problems with the official story, and uh, the ones that caught my attention were the rapid failure of the connections uh, in order for the building to come down at the rate that it did. The uh, basic philosophy of the building codes in the last 75 to 80 years has been to ensure ductile failure of the members to provide for the public safety. Uh, under this philosophy, uh, members that are overloaded will deform elastically uh, within the elastic range of the material with increasingly large deformations and deflections and then after the yield point of the members reached, it will go into a plastic range where the steel stretches without any increase in load. This gives rise to large deformations that are uh, visible and apparent to the occupants of the structure, giving them warning of impending failure and it gives them uh, evidence of structural distress in progress. And again, this gives them time to evacuate the structure. Uh, the buildings at the World Trade Center, uh, that did not occur. The connections failed first uh, without the, any of the members exhibiting large deformations or, uh, or deflections. Uh, over 400 connections per second had to fail in order for the, mem for the members to be released and for the structure to descend at almost freefall rate. The, the actual failure mode of the structure uh, showed that the connections were failing at over 400 connections per second for building number seven and a similar number for buildings one and two. Uh, this is uh, in direct uh, physical contradiction to the design of the building, which would assure that the members went through large elastic and plastic deformations before the connections would fail. In fact, the connections are designed with a safety factor of 1.5 to 3 times the failure load for the member. So this assures that the member will always fail first, first in an elastic mode and then a plastic mode, and after the member has failed, then the, uh, the connection would still be intact. Uh, so the failure of all these connections as the primary means of uh, structural failure is uh, inconsistent with a natural gravitational collapse and indicates the presence of other agents which would dismember these connections. And um, I, I've seen the uh, animation sequence from the National Institute of Standards and Technology for their model, their mathematical model of the collapse of building number seven and they have the uh, inside members that one column gave way which they claim uh, resulted in the collapse of all the uh, surrounding members and then this precipitated a global collapse but this failure mechanism would require that the connections would have to fail at this tremendous rate uh, for building number seven of 400 connections per second and uh, this just would not be physically possible uh, for a gravitational collapse. There had to be some other agent responsible for dismembering all the uh, members from their connections and from each other. Um, uh, so I think that the NIST model is flawed. Uh, of course, they won't release all of their uh, parameters uh, that they use to model the uh, collapse, and uh, that is a primary problem for them uh, because uh, a mathematical model can be made to fail in any mode. Building number seven uh, descended in free fall for the first 100 feet, which uh, means that there was absolutely no resistance to the descent whatsoever. And this is inconsistent with the energy redistribution that would be required from the descending mass to the remaining structure.
This rapid failure of the connections would not allow for the required elastic deformations and plastic deformations of the members which would be required to fail, to make the connections fail. This uh, transfer of energy from the descending mass to the remaining structure which would deform those members elastically and plastically would remove energy from the descending mass and cause the descent to be at less than free fall speed. Now there is no method for making the connections fail through a natural gravitational collapse. There had to be some agent that was destroying the connections in building number seven at 400 connections per second. And the only thing that I can see that would be uh, capable of doing this would be explosive devices at the connections. And uh, this is why I think that there has to be a new investigation to find out the real physical causes for these, all these members to act in an atypical fashion and totally inconsistent with modern structural design and theory, as well as the examples of buildings that have collapsed and are on record uh, of controlled demolitions. Uh, in my 37 years of experience as a structural engineer, I've never seen modes of failure such as have been exhibited in the case of these buildings, and that's why I feel that we need a new independent investigation to explain the destruction of these three buildings. Mm -hmm.